Welcome to this special edition of Waiting into Retirement. Uh, I'm Mike, and you might notice that this looks a little different here. We are in a hotel in Toronto near the airport, and that is because this is a special surprise edition of Waiting into Retirement. It was Laura's birthday, and uh, we, or I should say, I planned a little uh, trip for us. So we, uh, we whisked off to the airport and the plan was we were going to San Miguel de Ende for a four or five day trip to celebrate her birthday. So yes, I was very much surprised. I got a text with a treasure hunt and envelopes to open. And the first surprise that I opened was some carry on luggage. And then in the luggage was an envelope to say, we are going to be going away, packed for four days and you don't know where we're going and here we are. So we did go to the airport and I had a feeling that it was gonna be somewhere warm based on what Mike was packing. So I packed accordingly, but what a surprise to have a trip to destinations unknown. Security. Yeah, so I had done a little, well, a lot of pre-work on this one. Um, I had set up a number of properties for us to view while we were there. Uh, so that was, um, you know, in an effort to look at some more homes, to provide you, the viewers, with some more visuals around homes in San Miguel. So we, uh, we actually contacted a different realtor this time and probably, I'd say, had a better experience. Um, and we saw three properties, so they will certainly be coming up in future episodes. Um, and we also talked a little bit about um, doing some episodes around some of the food that we ate, some of the shopping. Uh, as you can see, Laura is shopping here right now. This is the obligatory airport stop to make sure you have snacks for an airplane. Um, so the travel day um, went as planned, I would say it was an early morning. The flights were all on time. Uh, the only, um, I guess, hiccup that we had was the driver that we had scheduled to pick us up at the airport did not show up. He went to the wrong airport. So there are two airport options in San Miguel, um, Carretero and Leon. Uh, and he went to the wrong one, so we had to take a taxi, but that was okay. So we were able to be dropped off. The taxi ride was probably about 45 minutes. We landed at our Airbnb and you can see here, it is high up on the hill. It was just an absolutely gorgeous day. The weather was perfect. You couldn't ask for better, especially after um, such a long trip. And we arrived in the afternoon. So we were able to take a walk into town. Very so interesting to see the cobbled stones. And again, really understanding the structure, the infrastructure of the town. So if you're wearing heels, you, you got to switch to your sneakers or I ended up using my Crocs for my flip flops like to be able to navigate the streets. They're very narrow. Often the sidewalks are one person only. And the trip down, I think is just as hard as the trip up. You might disagree with me, Michael, but you, you're really using those stabilizer yeah. muscles going down the hill. So we decided very early on in our trip that we were going to be taking taxis to navigate back and forth. But you can see here, you know, the streets are very narrow. It's really surprising to me though, how courteous drivers are. Is It's very much like, no, you go, no, you go, no, you go, no, you go. And even when coming up the streets, you can see this um, van slowed down while we ducked into a doorway so that he could go just unbelievable um, courtesy. I thought there would be more motorbikes. There really wasn't. It was a lot more taxis and you could pick a taxi up on any corner. So as you walk down the hill, the beauty of where we were staying at our Airbnb, which was Capilla de Piedra, um, is that it basically dropped us right in front of the parochia. So this is the main square. Always lots of people here taking pictures. So that's entertaining. Um, you could sit in the park across from the square and watch everybody try and get a selfie in front of the building or uh, try and get pictures without people interrupting the pictures and walking in front of them. 
um, but just a beautiful church. It's a UNESCO heritage site. Um, and it's just the hub of all the activity that goes on in San Miguel. It doesn't matter where you are in the city, you can see the church, so you always know how to kind of get back to this area. And um, just, just a beautiful area there. I just love sitting out in front of this church and watching the world go by. It definitely has its own flavor, and you can pass your camera to just about anybody to say, can you please take a quick picture of me in front of here? It really is one of the, I would say, two hubs of San Miguel. People have places to sit that are shaded, so no matter what the weather is, you're able to take a spot and listen to some of the bands that are playing. And even then, the courtesy really comes through. You'll have one band, start up and then as they wind down another one as you can see here there's lots of weddings going on it's a very popular wedding destination for um, the friends in Mexico and not just in San, from San Miguel I actually have a colleague it was one of the two places that she shortlisted for her wedding destination lots of uh, statues and, and monuments around the parochia as well as around the city and we'll see some of that in, in some of our walking tour that we're doing here today. This meeting place too, I, we should add, it's not just for you know people living in the area. You have a lot of expats that come down here and people watch. The, there's different restaurants around the corner. Nice to be able to jump in and grab an ice cream. We'll let you enjoy the music for a moment. So this is a typical scene here of families sitting out in the park in front of the church and uh, nicely dressed bands walking around kind of just playing music for people sitting in the park. And they're not collecting money or anything. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if it's part of the community that, that pays them to keep this ambiance up or whether they are looking for money and we just weren't bright enough to give them any. But uh, a unique experience and of course here are the um, the tall puppets that you see walking around the city at various uh, various locations but typically you see them in the uh, in the park here in front of the parochia as well we had a really fun experience of being interviewed too which uh, it you know, they have local schools where they're teaching English and it was really for them to practice their English skills, which I thought was kind of cute and interesting. Yeah, that was interesting. I, I had forgotten about that, but it was two young men and one would video the other one asking us questions and they were trying to learn English. So we were, we really could, uh, what's the right word for it? Relate to them, I guess, because we were trying to do the same thing in Spanish. Ah, uh, definitely. So this is a typical street uh, in San Miguel. This is closer to the San Antonio district. Um, so we have just a, a couple clips we're sharing with you here around what it's like to walk the streets and what the homes look like and the different uh, decorations and flowers on the homes. So this was a really beautiful area here. Um, really nice stonework, if you could call it that. Um, and as you can see, as we walk down the roads here, this was a rather quiet street. So there weren't a lot of uh, vehicles coming back and forth. But the sidewalks, which are worthy of mentioning, they are very narrow as well. So if you're coming upon someone else coming at you on a sidewalk, generally one of you has to step off onto the road to let the other one go by. And walking side by side, holding hands is almost, almost impossible in San Miguel, depending on the time of day. It's nice to be able to peek in the doorways too, because, and they expect you to. I think they take great pride in their atriums or their um, entranceways 
This is actually a bird's nest of parakeets. And just look at the size of that. And of course, they're quite noisy. I think it would be difficult if you lived there, but it was certainly beautiful and nice to hear when you're walking through there. This street actually too was quite flat, which was also unusual. So here is the, the facade of another house. Um, and, and again, they're always very nicely decorated and very unique. Um, I think in North America, we are somewhat used to all the homes looking the same in a subdivision. That's certainly not the case in San Miguel or in Mexico in general. So I stopped and took a quick, uh, quick shot of this uh, memorial to someone that was on the side of the building. You can see that they use a variety of materials too, different types of stone. You have some floral and fauna, and they even build the sidewalks around each of these, which they incorporate the outdoors into their entire infrastructure. I think it also helps for the flooding and any rain that they have as well. I just thought this street in particular was very beautiful. I like that fact that it's flat. <laughs> you weren't going either up or down, which was kind of nice as well. Yeah, it's interesting. When you look at real estate prices, there, there's a big difference in if you have to go up or down a hill to get to Centro or where the parochia is. And there's a high premium on those that have less hills to climb. And I should add that we did have a little bit of rainfall while we were there. And these stones get very slippery. So just to elaborate on that, Laura <laughs> fell. I wasn't going to elaborate on that, but yes. And it was kind of cute because I had probably four or five people stop. Are you okay? Are you okay? And help me up and clean me up. You can see too the details that um, are inspired at the lower eye level are carried all the way up to the top. Now this is a gorgeous park. Yeah, so this is um, Juarez Park and it is in the middle of Centro and it is the hub of all things good in San Miguel. So as you can see here, we've uh, followed a dog walker. Um, so there's always lots of people with their dogs doing the big loop around this um, fair-sized park. Um, there are lots of events that go on in the park. They were setting up this particular day um, for, it was like a food festival. So as we understood from one of the locals, it was all of the restaurants in town setting up a little booth and letting you sample their food in the park. Now we didn't get back to actually experience that. We were out touring something else. Um, but they have lots of um, signs like this in the park that show you the history of the park and the history of San Miguel and um, lots of people exercising in this park as well. The cleanliness was amazing. Now because we've been doing a lot of walking and had a lot of coffee it tells you about the flora and the fauna and then you can then, then take a look. There's little walk paths into the gardens. So it, it made it rather interesting because you have these larger billboards, but then even assigned to the plants, it gives an explanation of which species are where and whether they're good for you know, snakes, butterflies, whatever. Now, we did take a walk and they do have bathrooms. So maybe Mike could tell you a little bit more about the bathrooms. Yeah, so... I think this is very common in Mexico, but you did have to pay to basically get toilet paper. Um, so I don't know what, I think it was five pesos or 10 pesos or something to use the public bathrooms here in the park. But these ones were not nice. They were emergency only um, standards, if I can call it that. So uh, there wasn't um, toilet seats or, or anything like that. So I would suggest if you're walking through the park that you only use those if if you absolutely had to. There's a lot of artwork too that they set up on the weekends that is for sale. Unfortunately, we weren't able to take a closer peek at these with the camera because there's several signs as well saying, please don't, and we wanted to be able to respect that. So I think one of the beauties of the park is there are always people sitting 
like this gentleman here on the left, sitting on benches, um, just looking to chat. We met a couple that we are coming up upon here now that had uh, two, three dogs, I think it was. Yeah. And we had a wonderful conversation, and we're going to um, we're going to share some of that conversation with you. Um, and that's really when you get to meet the people of San Miguel and how nice they are and how welcoming they are. I think that's what really makes nice. San Miguel what it is and why it is attractive to us. Everybody is willing to share their experiences, lessons learned, and of course the thing that the common bond that we tend to find is I'm very attracted to dogs whenever we're out and about and the fact that we saw three dogs that look to be quite elderly I immediately, of course, wanted to stop and pet the dogs. But as you can see, you know, there's another dog walker with another dog and it, it just seems like a natural intro, but it doesn't have to be. Are they friendly? Poodles or doodles? So as Laura said, <laughs> here is the meet and greet for the three dogs. And we are going to share our conversation with this wonderful couple uh, now, just because uh, they talked to us about how they got their dogs to San Miguel and um, their experience in the city. So we'll leave you with that for a few moments. Right on our way when we come down. Now this is Lucky the Fussy. Uh, he, likes, he thinks he's tough, but he rolls over and dies if any dog comes after him. Oh, yeah. And they get the dogs water. Get them special food. Where, you, dog where are you folks from? We're from Ontario, Canada. Okay. Ontario. Nice to meet you. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, sure. Yes. Nice to meet you. Yes. Thank you. I, think I love she's you, staying. dog. Look at that. Look at me. I'm not going anywhere. Hey, what's wrong with why this? Why should I have to move? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what she's saying. Now, that's a professional cameraman mm -hmm. right here. Yeah, he is. Try to get the dogs. Oh, we're dog, we're dog lovers. Oh, are you getting the dogs? Yeah, a little bit. We love. Oh. We have a Berna doodle and a Golden doodle. Oh, well she, then she looks you, like a retriever. You know what doodles are all oh, about. Oh yes. We do. Yeah, too right smart it. for our own good. I got it. Got it. <laughs> yeah, this one thinks he's a boy. He doesn't think he's a dog. And right. this is Lucky, who's hey, like Eeyore. Yeah, Lucky. Woodbine is based here in San Miguel, but it's an oh. international. They drive, uh, you know, equipment and furniture and everything. And yeah. David Locke, and I'll give it to you. And so I called Limo. him up one day and I said, hey, I have these three miniature Labradoodles. Do you ever take dogs? He said, we take dogs all the time. I said, do you really? He said, yeah. He said, well, where are you going to be? I said, we're going to be in Texas. He said, well, I can have a driver come up and pick them up, which he did. And the driver wow. picked them up on a Sunday afternoon. We flew down on Monday. At, we were at our house at 6 o'clock Monday night. The dog showed up at 10 o'clock that night. Wow. In their own private van. Air conditioned. Wow. Thank you very much. Oh, they were so, they were so It was happy. worth it, let me rolling. tell you. Oh, it yeah. Worth well, it. You have David. See, this is what happens when you come to San Miguel. You meet people all the time who always give you good advice. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes. We have found doctors and lawyers and everything. <laughs> two, two people down here. It's like, okay, what do we need today? Well, we need a blah, blah. Oh, I've got a wonderful thinking. woman who does facials. I got somebody else who's doing my hair. We got a great ger gerontologist. I mean, you know, hey, in six weeks' time, look right back. Yeah, <laughs> that's you're all set. You, We're all set. You we sound like in. you're. I'll tell you this. The... So we are still walking the park, and um, that was a couple. I believe it was a teacher and a student, and he was teaching her how to dance. So that was interesting. We watched that for a little while, and I got a little clip of that. And uh, this is just kind of circling the back side of the park now. You felt very safe there as well, despite all of the flora and fauna, you know, in the park. There was just so many people milling about and taking the time to relax that you did feel very comfortable there. I was actually surprised though in the surrounding the park, there wasn't, a, there were shops, but there wasn't a lot of places to grab a cup of coffee or an ice cream at this particular location. So I do really feel this would be comparable to like a park that you would have by your home that you would take advantage of with your dog and with others just to spend time. The weather, again, I can't say enough good about the weather. Yeah, it's nice because it's, it's comfortable during the day. It's, I'd say, you know, 25 to 28 degrees was our experience. 
it wasn't humid um, but at night the temperatures dipped enough that it was comfortable to sleep in the mornings at times you would wear um, you know a long sleeve shirt or coat just because you were a little bit cool I was I was fine um, so so yeah this here again we were uh, we went to an outlook up on top to look down at that last view we saw and this was the walk back down the hill to the parochia again so this is a different road um, but all of them are so unique you find yourself wanting to record every step you take just because of the uniqueness of every road and the houses that are alongside of it and you will see that we are doing the recording on the down grade not the upgrade because we we were both kind of puffing and puffing. It, it does get to be a lot after 15, 20 minutes of going straight up. So we are at 6,000 feet elevation. So that, that's an interesting point as well. Some people struggle with the thin air. I really didn't have any issues personally, and you do have some breathing concerns. And how did you find it? I had no problems. I was really, really surprised. Um, my best friend actually suffers from migraines, and I think it would be really interesting to see if that impacts people that do have chronic migraine problems or even asthma. I took my puffers, didn't need them, which was also really good from my perspective. Also didn't need any of my allergy medication, which was another bonus and kind of a surprise the amount of hummingbirds, we didn't capture any here, but we certainly had a lot at our Airbnb. It's just amazing to see them whizzing and dodging around. And you can understand, given the beauty of the flowers, there are just so many varieties for them to take advantage of. Yeah, they were quite amazing. And we didn't see any spiders or snakes or anything like that. We saw the odd stray cat couple of dogs but really you know it it was just very clean tidy there's often water bowls out for visiting dogs that are walking just very a sense of community and being part of it I guess that that was another thing that just amplifies the culture in Mexico that is just so welcoming so we're coming to a close of our walking tour. Um, one thing of note here are the doors are all very unique as well. They have really neat knockers on every door. It's like they go out of their way to find something different. So here was a door I caught that actually had two doves built into part of the door. So it's things like that that make it uh, really, really unique. So we hope that you enjoyed our quick walking tour and our quick surprise video. And uh, we will be back next week with some more details. Sounds good. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks again for joining us.